This summer, I decided to pick up some graveyard shifts at my local full-time job, simply because it pays more and I'm a university student drowning in student debt. About two weeks ago, on the rare occasion that I get to sleep during the time the sun is down, at 3.30 to 4 a.m., I was suddenly awoken by a loud sound. Me being half asleep, I honestly didn't know what the sound exactly was. So I chopped it up to one of my neighbors dropping something because I live in an apartment with very thin walls. So I just tried going back to sleep. After about 10 minutes of laying there with my eyes closed, I heard the sound again. But this time I'm pretty much awake so I recognize what the sound is immediately. Someone was knocking on my window. For context, I'm a single female living alone in a basement suite. So my windows are basically level with the sidewalk. Anyways, obviously I'm freaked out and I don't know what the heck to do. I don't want to move and make any loud noises so they know that I'm home and I'm just frozen laying in bed. But then I hear the knocking again. I instantly bolt up as my fight or flight kicks in and I run to the front door, which has my keys with my pepper spray on it. The keys clink together and make a noticeable noise, and the knocking starts to get more intense and loud. This is when I realize the window with the screen by my bed is almost all the way open because my cat likes to sit on the edge, and I forgot to close and lock it. I start to freak out, already having major anxiety. I start looking for my phone just in case I need to call the cops, but me being clumsy and shaking from anxiety... I drop the phone on the ground, and whoever is at my window proceeds to slide either his fingernails or a sharp object down the screen. I realize this person's intentions are either to come in or to scare me. So, like an idiot, and not thinking, I run to the window as quickly as I can and slam it shut and lock it, while avoiding looking outside at whoever it was. The knocking stops and uh, I wait about 30 minutes without hearing anything more. I lay back down and go right back to sleep. The next morning, I honestly couldn't believe that, that it even happened to me. I start to think that maybe it was all the dream. And so I go outside and investigate and see an empty beer bottle and a ripped up blanket. I text my only friend that knows where I live and ask them if they were messing with me. They say no, which I figured because they don't drive and live quite far away. And the buses around my house stopped running well before 3am. So I called my landlord and told him what happened. Mindy says to ignore it and that this has happened before, which is really creepy. Anyways, I obviously recognize now that I should have done a lot of things differently and called the police right away. It hasn't happened since, but nonetheless, it was still super terrifying. But I really can't afford to move again, so I really hope that the knocking doesn't come back. A few months ago, I was at 22 and at the local coin laundromat. I went late because I had been studying around 10pm. The laundromat is pretty small and closer to the edge of the beach town that I live in. The town is pretty well known for drifters and people experiencing homelessness. Most people are friendly, and there is a lot of drug use, but I've never really felt scared. Everything was fine until I went to move my laundry to a dryer. I was listening to music on my headphones, but not super loudly. Suddenly, I got the feeling that someone was watching me. I can't really explain it. I just felt the presence. I turned around and there was a man standing just a few feet away from me. He was a white guy with pink hair wearing a full face mask, like a ski mask, a hoodie, gloves and sunglasses, even though it was dark out. The gloves and sunglasses immediately made me feel uncomfortable. I thought maybe that he was a drifter or high, but I didn't really want to be rude. I tried to laugh it off and told him that he surprised me. He immediately started talking. A lot of it was disjointed and just didn't make sense. He was talking about coming up from Brazil to bring his brother money to get a classic car. None of which made much sense. But he would ask me questions and wait for me to respond. So I tried to just play along. 
and I still thought he was probably just high or something, but he was standing between me and the only door, and I started getting this gut feeling that he was blocking the door on purpose, not just accidentally as he talked to me. He was getting closer to me as he talked and the feeling only got stronger. Logically, something was off, but mostly I just had this feeling in the pit of my stomach that I needed to leave and keep him talking until I could. I started to the edge to the side, but he stayed in front of me and the feeling got more intense. I started to grip my keys in the attack position just in case. He talked more and then he backed off a little and he took off his backpack, which was a child's unicorn backpack, and set it on a nearby dryer. I looked over to the door for just a second, and when I looked back he was pulling something that I couldn't see out and holding it to the side behind him where I couldn't see it, but I did see what was in his backpack, duct tape. Instantly, it was just like an alarm went off. There was no more worrying about being rude, no more second guessing myself that he was just off but harmless. It was like this cold, numb dread just washed down over me. I almost felt calm, like I knew the next steps and I knew that I had to do something. Time seemed to move in slow motion and he turned back to me, not saying anything anymore and took a step forward. I gripped my keys as tightly as possible and tried to mentally prepare to fight. I remember being afraid that I would move too slow or be too weak, just like in a nightmare. But all of a sudden, the door to the laundromat opened and a woman walked in, barely even looking at us as she went to get her laundry. It was like a scene in a movie. A moment of intensity, just interrupted by something innocuous and suddenly, it was over. He just turned, got his bag, and he left. I was so scared, I just stayed there a minute until uh, I could get my laundry and just go home. I didn't report it. I never knew what to say since nothing had actually happened. But when I think about it, I think the scariest thing is that he left as soon as somebody had walked in. If he was just crazy, it wouldn't have mattered. I think a stranger's laundry timer saved me from something terrible, and because of that, I don't go to the laundromat anymore. I joined a laundry service instead. The extra cost is worth it to never go back. For context, I'm a 26-year-old male and have a larger build. Not fat, but also not muscular, just have a bigger look to me. I've lived an unusual life and have been through many iffy situations with people, so I'm not frightened easily by odd or wacky people. I can also defend myself pretty well in a fight. I live in a city with pretty bad crime and work in a sketchy set of town. Well, not the most crime filled it, but it's still sketchy and you get shady people once in a while. I'm also a fan of the dark life, so I love walking at night and do not really get scared. I work a second shift job and it is my duty as one of these supervisors to lock the gates after the sun goes down and all the day shift people are gone. Our work is enclosed with a fence that has barbed wire on the top. Just a few days ago, I was walking to close the gate. I was coming from the far side of the parking lot after throwing something away in the dumpster. As I was walking to the gate, I could see a strange man on a bike. It is dark and cold at this time of year at 8pm, so I found it odd to see a man that was at least 30 to 40 on a bike. But I carried on as it could just be a man going to work, or leaving work who doesn't have a car. As I continue to walk, I see that he's now doing circles in the road at the end of the little driveway that leads to the fence. Now my guard is up and this is strange to me. As I reach the fence, he has now set down the bike and is looking at me and walking toward me. He is shaking like I have seen many people on drugs do before. I am still not super worried, as like I said, I have dealt with many shady people before. I close one side of the gate quick and rush to the other, swinging it closed. And the gate is locked by a chain and a padlock, so I grab both sides of the chain. But before I can get the padlock in through, the man sticks his hands through the fence and grabs me by the shirt. 
At this point, I yell, Get the heck off me before I beat you up. As it was, I was holding the fence closed with the chains while he grabbed me and yelled, I'll kill you. And the only thing going through my mind was how I was going to get the upper hand in this dude. And if I should fight him, i wrap the dang chain around his neck. I was fortunate and a police officer had just turned the block as this was all going down. He flipped his lights on and quickly took the man down and cuffed him. While the man was in his car, he questioned me and got a statement and I was on my way. So, to the druggie who wanted to attack me, even though I know I'll run into more one way or another, I hope we don't meet again. This happened almost four years ago. My parents and my husband were visiting my mom's family in Indianapolis. I used to go all the time as a child, but I wouldn't know my way around. I was drinking a lot because my husband had an emotional affair with his ex that lasted four months. She tried to break us up. Honestly, I could write a whole post about how she tried to ruin our relationship. So we saw my family and then went back to the hotel. I was upset, so I said that I was going to smoke. In reality, I was going to the hotel bar. I got multiple double vodka shots with a splash of orange juice, and I was feeling good. The bar was closing, so I asked the bartender where there was another bar, and she told me to go to TGIF's. It was about a 10 minute walk. Remember, this was after 10 p.m. and I was already pretty drunk. I went inside and I got more drinks. I don't remember how I got back outside, but I was smoking and there were people outside in the parking lot with me. Suddenly, I was being dragged into a car. I don't know how long it had been. I was so drunk that I couldn't do anything or even realized how messed up I was. During this time, my husband realized that I was missing and woke up my mom in my parents' room. And he tracked my phone to the TGIF parking lot. My mom and husband got to my phone, but I wasn't there. Then my mom saw this man trying to get me in his car. She got out of the Uber that they were in and started screaming to let me go. And this guy thought that my mom was just a stranger trying to save me. He didn't believe her and I remember her yelling... I only remember him saying, How do I know she's your daughter? And something like that. He had grabbed me so I had had bruises on my arm. My mom threatened to call 911, which I was told later, since I was almost in his car. He let go of me and drove off with his back passenger door wide open. I'm convinced that I would have been taken at the very least. I was unfamiliar with the area. I was drunk and I barely realized how bad the situation was. I was taken to the hospital, checked in, I was released the next day. I didn't hear about what my mom and my husband saw until we got home since we were driving home that entire day. I'm a mother of two daughters and live out in the country. My husband is a welder and a really outgoing and charismatic guy which means that he has tons of friends that will periodically stop by to hang out with him. In fact, there are some friends he trusts enough to use the tools in his garage and stay at the house when he isn't home. Well, one late evening he was gone when I heard someone pull into the driveway. We have two dogs who were going nuts with barking at the picture window in our living room. I looked out and saw a familiar looking blue blazer and assumed my husband's friend, Bob, was over to use something from the garage or to wait for my husband to get home. He had a knock on the door, so I figured they had already talked to each other about it. No big deal. But the dogs wouldn't stop barking and growling, which just didn't seem right because they knew Bob. So I looked more closely out the window and realized that there was a man lingering near the garage, but he was not Bob. In fact, I had never seen him before. I decided to take my dogs and go outside to see who he was and what he wanted. He had told me that he lived on the street and that he knew my husband. He was very friendly and began telling me all about how he had to move out of his house because he and his wife were divorcing. He seemed quite familiar with my husband 
and even asked about her dog, Pepper, who had passed away a few months prior. Pepper was a very smart and protective dog, and could be scary if he thought harm would come to me or my family. He didn't realize that Pepper had died, and really seemed genuinely apologetic about it. Meanwhile, I noticed that my dog's shadow still hadn't settled down around the sky. He wouldn't let him pet him, and the hair in his back was sticking straight up. And he would intermittently growl during our conversation too. This was really odd for him, and I was pretty confused because this guy seemed really nice. After chatting for a while, he asked for my husband's number so he could call him. That was a red flag for me, because if my husband wanted someone to have his number, he would have given it to them. So I told the man that I would give him a call right then. I called my husband in front of the man, who suddenly looked a little nervous. I explained to my husband that Jim from down the street was at the house to visit him. Immediately, my husband told me to tell Jim to get off our property and to never return. This scared the crap out of me, because like I said, my husband is really friendly and hospitable usually. He told me to make the man leave and he was on his way home. I ended up making up some excuse to Jim. For some reason, I just couldn't say something so mean to him after he had been so friendly and polite to me. And he backed up right away suddenly quick to leave. My husband arrived home a short time later and explained that Jim was a severe drug addict who had been stealing from all of his neighbor's garages. His wife threw him out of the house because of this and he's been desperate for cash to support the habit. He was proudly scoping out what he could steal from my husband's garage and seeing what obstacles my dogs would be in his way. To think he could have harmed me or my kids, it makes me furious, but he seemed so nice, and I felt like an idiot for not realizing the truth. I've learned my lesson now though. If somebody comes over that I don't know while my husband is out, I just call him right away. Update. My husband told me tonight that Jim was arrested and is currently in jail now. He apparently was caught robbing from my neighbor's garage. Good riddance. I had moved to a new area, and so I was learning my new bus routes and stops to and from uni. I was on my way home late one evening, and as I tapped my card, there was a lady probably in her 60s sitting up front at the seat behind the bus driver. As I got in, she wrinkled her nose up at me, I chalked this up to her maybe being a little old fashioned as I was wearing ripped jeans and an ACDC shirt, but I don't look tough for me in any way. I was kind of taken aback by her intense reaction, but I soon forgot about it. By the time I pressed the button to call for my stop, the bus driver overshot and missed it, which he realized immediately, and apologized for to which I replied, it's okay, no worries, and he goes to pull over at the next stop for the rob. The bus was empty at this point, save for a person up in the back and the grumpy one up in the front. As I got up to get off, the older lady turns right around in her chair with the ugliest look and begins to berate me in a loud voice. Hi, you stupid. Why would you press that button, you idiot girl? I hope you never drive, you'll kill someone. And you've wasted my time, you idiot. Over and over again. And the bus driver looked back for a second dumbfounded, but he stayed out of it. She had these dagger eyes fixed on me as she just became louder and more angry, and I just ended up avoiding her gaze as I was so confused and intimidated. I was half in shock at how nasty and loud she was being towards me, so when the next stop came, I quickly made for the exit, and all I could say was, yeah, okay, cool. She would just lean towards me, almost sticking her face into my shoulder that I felt her brush against me as I walked past. I was freaked out to say the least and darted out the door, and I hear her growl another insult under her voice as the doors close. I hope I never see her again.